Hey, this is Eric with programwitheric.com. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about Ember and Windows. So as you probably um, know, as you can see here from my desktop, I'm actually running a Windows system here. And what I'm trying to do is install Node. So let's say you have a brand new installation of Windows and you want to do some development on it. Uh, I've talked about past and past videos of using um, PuTTY. You can have your own server somewhere, and a uh, Linux server, and remote into it, then do all your uh, programming remotely. But let's say you're in Windows and you want to stick with Windows. So the first thing you need to do is to install uh, N um, Node. And with Node, you'll get NPM, and you'll need NPM to install Ember. So if you just go to the Node.js website and you go to the download section, you'll see you have an option to download the Windows installer, and from there you can do the 32-bit or 64-bit. I'm on Windows 10 here. I went ahead and did the 64-bit. Uh, after it's done downloading, I won't go ahead and download because I've already done it here. It'll install it, and it also install it on your path in your Windows box, so that way you can access it anywhere you need to um, when you're on the command line in your shell environment. The next thing you need to use to get window to get uh, programming in Ember in Windows is Git. When you use Ember CLI, it uses Git to download the repositories. Um, I used use I used it from Git scm Git scm com and the 64-bit. When I did the installation, it asked me a question if I wanted to make to have it um, be available on the command line. I just chose the option to say yes there, so that way it was available. Um, just also one other note, when you install Node, the latest versions of Node come with NPM 3.3 as of this recording. You really want the later versions of NPM because Windows does have a problem with longer f directory paths, file names. Uh, so if your directory path becomes too long, there's some issues, but the latest version of Git as laser version of npm fixes that so you don't have to worry about that usually it's version 3.0 and on so after you have node installed and you have git installed then you'll have to figure out what shell program you're going to use because you'll need to get on the command line to be able to create your directory structure and move around and then you can use your favorite text editor like sublime or atom or whatever you want to do it and um, to actually do the programming in or vim you can also get that work in a Windows, of course. So uh, a couple options you have is Commander. I haven't used it, but I've had I've heard good things. It's uh, really easy to use. Kind of gives that Linux feel and style to move around in in Windows. Uh, Sigwin, I have used quite a bit of Sigwin. I, I'm a big Linux fan, so Sigwin makes it really easy to install a lot of Linux packages on your Windows system, and then you kind of get that Linux feeling also on Windows. Uh, one other thing you can do is, uh, you can see from my desktop here, I have Windows PowerShell. Uh, PowerShell, and you can also run the command prompt, but PowerShell is a little bit of a better shell environment for Windows, and that's what I'm going to use today. Uh, keep in mind when you want to run it, to run it as administrator, especially with uh, doing any kind of development and programming Ember.js, it seems to run a little bit quicker and a little bit better if you run it as administrator. So you just right click on it, run as administrator. If it's not, I, I created a link on my desktop here, but you can find it in Windows 10. You can just search for Windows PowerShell and it'll show up. And you just, yes. Here is my Windows PowerShell. If you type in NPM, you can see it comes up. It says I have version 3.3.12 installed. And so that's just because I just installed Node and it has this version installed. One other thing to keep in mind is that you um, some Ember packages might use um, certain symbolic links. So in that case, you'll need to go in to your local security policy. You can also just search for local security policy. It'll bring it up. And then go to local policy and then user rights assignment. And there's something called create symbolic links. As an administrator, you should have access. So if you run... PowerShell as administrator, you should have access to create symbolic links. If you're running a shell program and you're not running it as administrator, you may need to go in here and make sure that 
they have the ability to create symbolic links. I haven't tried it. I haven't tried it without it, but it's a good idea to have it. Your uh, Ember packages, your NPM packages should still work if it can't create symbolic links, but it may not. I haven't confirmed that yet. So after you have NPM installed and you have Node installed and you have Git installed and you got your PowerShell, then you can go ahead and start creating programs. So I created a directory here and I already created one app called my new app. So, but to uh, install Ember, it's just like you would in, in, in your Mac OS environments or your Linux environments. You do npm install Ember CLI and then dash G. And then that would go ahead and start the installation of Ember CLI. But we're going to go ahead and stop that because we already have it installed. If you go Ember CLI, excuse me, Ember. It's a little bit slower on Windows. It's actually a lot slower. But you can see it's it's definitely installed by running that command. Another really good um, thing to do if you're running on Windows is to also install Ember CLI Windows. So if we bring up my the web page here again and we look at the Ember CLI Windows GitHub, it's it helps with performance. And the way it works is um, you can install it globally, just like we did before with the Ember CLI, and then you can run this this command inside your already existing Ember projects. And when you run it inside an Ember project, it'll help performance and it'll take care of your Windows Defender and Windows Search and it improves us a few things. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate that. So I'll bring up my PowerShell up here again. And for the sake of time, I could just go ahead and create a new app too. But um, I'll, you just have to take my word for it that it does install and it, it does create the directory structure okay so I'll go to my new app and then first if I want to just take a look at it I can run just ember serve or server just like normal it'll just take a second and it'll start and it'll run it on localhost 4200 by default just like you expect and if I run localhost here you see it, it's also running there I can control C it. It just takes a second. I terminate it. And I can, you know, bring up Adam if I needed to. To be let's say for my text editor. I have welcome to Ember here. And I'll run Ember serve. Server this time. Sever. Ember serve. And you'll see it, it just works just like you would expect on the Mac or Linux environment. If I make any changes, it auto loads. The live reload seems to work. So let's see if it does. Welcome to Ember on Windows. Control S to save it. You see in the background, it, it automatically updated. So I can do all my development just as if I was on my Mac or Linux PC. So going back to Ember CLI Windows. So if I have this command installed, Ember CLI Windows dash G, G, just npm install Ember CLI Windows, npm install Ember CLI Windows dash G, I can go ahead and install Ember CLI Windows. It's already installed in here, so what I can do is I can just type Ember CLI Windows. And it'll ask you if you continue this tool, automate the configuration of Windows Defender and Windows Search. Do you want to proceed? So you can type yes. And then it does some configuration with inside those uh, that folder. So in my system, I don't have Windows Defender, but um, it's already disabled. Um, and it, it it finished the search configuration, so that's all done. So that's it. So at this point, I can go ahead and just do all the development I normally do and, and continue on. One thing to keep in mind, first time I ran Ember CLI Windows, I got some errors. 
And I actually got this error in particular. It said, and it said right here, should you get the PS security exception, allow your parachute to execute script by running the following command. It'll tell you to run this command if you get this error. So PowerShell is administrator, start run, and, it, and then you run this command right here. So it'll tell you when it gives you the error. It'll be a big, ugly looking error on the screen, but you'll just need to run that, and then you won't get that error anymore. So keep in mind, I got it, and then I was able to, to do this, and everything fixed itself. So that's about it. So that's how you can run Ember in Windows. It's really simple. It's still going to be a little bit slower, but I haven't run into too many problems. I haven't tried to create any crazy programs in it, but it seems to work. One other thing, uh, one last thing is the EmberCLI.com user guide. It has some really good information about running on Windows. It talks about uh, the Ember CLI Windows add-on that I just mentioned earlier. You can actually run the Ember CLI Windows as an add-on instead of running it in, globally, as I was doing before. And then you... Uh, it tells you how to install Ember and, and a few other things, and it talks about NPM3. So that's about it. So if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. And also, um, I'm writing a Ember.js cookbook, so please sign up for my mailing list and to get more information about that. Take care.